hey, John Hollis with Rockers in Recovery. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Rockers in Recovery Media is dedicated to carrying the message of addiction recovery education, and we do it through music, news, events, and festivals taking place within and not limited to the clean and sober community. Today we have a great episode store for you. Jam Alker uh, is going to talk about why music uh, is my therapy. And uh, Jam is uh, somebody that has been working with Rockers in Recovery for a while now and has done some events. And at the end of this show, we're going to actually uh, play an event that he played at up in Maine, Walpole, Maine, last year. So you'll be able to hear today's show and then hear some of the music that he played at our event. Jam's a great guy. We're going to get him on the line, and we're going to talk more to him about his music. Jam, good morning. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of the show. It's morning, your time, afternoon, mine. <laughs> How are you doing, John? Good to talk to you today, brother. Good to talk to you too, man. So let's let's talk about this. Music is my therapy. Uh, what is that about for you? Well, so I've always been a musician. I've always been a, a songwriter. Uh, there was a long period of time when I was in my active addiction that I didn't pick up the guitar, I didn't write, I, I basically spent my time numbing myself. When I went away to treatment, I had made the decision that I wasn't going to use drugs or alcohol anymore to numb myself, but that didn't mean that those difficult thoughts, feelings, and emotions weren't going to still come up in my life. So I had to figure out more healthy ways in which to be able to express and feel those difficult feelings and process those difficult thoughts without numbing myself to them anymore. And so I brought my guitar with me when I went to treatment and I just started to write about these things as they came up, as I started to feel these difficult feelings, uh, go through these, uh, these crazy thoughts that were going through my head. I just wrote about them. I put it down on paper. I put it uh, to music and found that was a great way to be able to to process those emotions and to be able to feel the things that I was feeling and, and get them out of my system in a healthy way. Because, you know, they, they say in, in recovery that, you know, the good news is you're going to feel your feelings again. The bad news is you're going to feel your feelings again. So that stuff was going to come up. And since I had made the decision that I wasn't going to use anymore, I had to figure out a different way to be able to uh, to deal with that stuff. And, and and music was a huge part of that. So in, in that sense, music was a huge part of my, has been, continues to be a huge part of my recovery and really is a very, very strong and healing form of therapy for me. Our last uh, communications with you on the show you were getting ready to – you were raising money for your first uh, solo EP. Uh, that turned out pretty well. You ended up raising the money to do it. Where are you at as far as uh, releasing the EP? I am actually taking a break out of the control room at the recording studio right now as we speak, doing my last session of the final little tweaks of, of volumes and effects and things like that. It, it's done after today. The record is done. 12 song album will go out for uh, mastering next week and it will be released uh, end of June at the latest early July. I don't have a date yet, but <clears throat> got the the record done. It's 12 songs. I'm so incredibly proud of it. It's just in the process of finishing up and uh, it's going to be out there. Uh, yeah. end of June, early July at the latest. I'm, I'm so excited and, and feel so blessed and so fortunate to have been able to do this. You've really been able to create a reach. I mean, on social network, there's a lot of people that follow you and love what you're doing. If you had to say anything to them today, what would it be? Oh, uh, there, there, there are so many things that I would say. You know, first, um, you know, continue <laughs> to fight uh, the good fight, and I, I appreciate all of the you know, the support and, and the love that I've gotten and I just, you know, the the support and, and the feedback that I get from them is is as or more important than any of the any of the help that, that I've been able to give them in, in terms of, of my message and my music. So if I was speaking directly to them, I, I so appreciate the support. Uh, I'm going to keep doing 
uh, what I'm doing and continue doing it for the right reasons. And I'm just happy that that I have been blessed with this ability to be able to express myself in this way. And I'm so happy that it's been able to connect with so many people and, and help to either, uh, you know, help them to see that there is a way out if they are still in active addiction or provide them with, with inspiration if they are in recovery. I'm just so blessed and, and, and thankful and grateful for the support and, you know, I'm going to keep doing what I, what I'm doing and keep trying to help people. Great stuff, Jam. Uh, tell us what you, uh, what you're up to. Any events coming up that you want to mention? Uh, what do I have coming up? Really the focus has been on the record. Uh, I am going to be doing a record release show sometime in, in July. The, the, the date hasn't been scheduled yet. Uh, other than that, I'm going to be doing a few recovery things through the course of the summer, uh, nothing that is, that is in the books that I could necessarily announce right now. Really, the focus has been on the record and getting the record out. I'm going to be uh, shooting a video for the first single at the end of the month and then just kind of exploding things out there with this record uh, end of June, early July, and then uh, you just you know keep up with me on, on Facebook or uh, Instagram. You'll be able to hear about any of the events that are coming up. Yeah, where can they find you on Instagram and uh, on Facebook? On Facebook, you can find me at Jam Alter Music. On Twitter, also at Jam Alter Music, although I don't do much with with, uh, with Twitter. Uh, on YouTube, you can find me at Jam Alter. You search Jam Alter on YouTube. And then Instagram, it is the Jamogram. Let me uh, ask you a question real quick. We're getting ready to, of course, uh, Right after we're done talking with you, we're going to play the uh, jam from Maine. <laughs> when cool. you came up to Very Maine cool. and you helped us and you did a lot of work up there and you spread the message of hope through your music, How, you know, helping and, and being a part of that, what was it like for you? I mean, it was an amazing experience to be able to, you know, continue to, you know, share my, my message, uh, you know, spread some some strength and hope uh, i think that the that the most impactful aspect of that experience was was getting to be more involved with the community meeting some of the amazing people who i had only met before through facebook i think that was our first actual face to face meeting meeting you and uh and paul and all the other folks your son um and so many of the other great people that that are a part of the Facebook recovery community to finally be face to face with them, and then also meet some some new people up there who are just so, you know, tremendously inspiring with what they're doing, helping other people who are are fighting this disease. Uh, the the community aspect of it, I think, was the was the most impactful part of it for me. It was a great experience. Jam, I want to thank you so much for being a part of Rockers in Recovery, supporting our mission, but most importantly, uh, all the work that you do for the recovery community. You're a great guy, and uh, lots of people love you. And, you know, thank you for being on the show today, for sure. John, you are the man. You're doing God's work. I love you. I appreciate you. Anytime you need me to do anything, you know I will be there for you, my friend. I appreciate that. We all appreciate it at Rockers and Recovery. And most importantly, stay safe, stay sober, and have a joyful day. Okay, brother? Thank you, bro. Take care. All right, man. There you go, guys. Jam Malker. Great guy. Uh, Rockers and Recovery again. Rockers and Recovery Media is dedicated to carrying the message of addiction recovery education, and we do it through music, news, events, festivals, taking place within and not limited to the clean and sober community. We love everybody that tunes in and listens to the show. Of course, this show turns into an archive right after we're done, so you can go to the same link and listen to it. If you're listening live right now, you can listen to it in an archive just by clicking on it later after the show. So here we go. Jam from Maine. Hey, bro. Yeah. <laughs>
Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys. What's happening? My name is Jam Alter, and I am a grateful recovering addict. Um, I want to start by saying that 22 and a half months ago, I was lying on a plastic mattress in a detox center. I was shaking, I was puking, my bones were aching, I was sweating, uh, dehydrated, puking, and I was shitting myself. Um, whenever I, I speak a little and play, I, I try to make sure to, to mention that because it's important for me to remind myself of that because as an addict, I often want to convince myself that I can go back out there and have another one and be successful at doing it. But today, I know that at best, that at, at the very best, that would end up with me back on that plastic mattress and detox. More likely, I would be dead, leaving a beautiful wife without a husband and an amazing three and a half year old daughter without a father. Mm. And that was not an easy conclusion for me to come to. It was not an easy battle for me to concede. Coming to terms with the fact that I could not battle my addiction into submission was a very difficult thing for me to do. But the way that I look at it today is if a nation were to go to war and they keep fighting that war, and no matter what they do, they know they can't win that war. They keep fighting and fighting, they can't win. You left with two choices <clears throat> either die or surrender. So I was uh, thinking about that while I was sitting in treatment. I brought this guitar with me and uh, I wrote a song that I hope you'll, you'll hear the, the guilt and the shame that was going through me when I wrote this. And it's about that battle and that inevitable uh, decision that I had to come to that it was time to surrender. The song is called Please. <laughs>
member of a uh, couple of anonymous fellowships. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as I've gotten more involved with those groups, I've learned that we, we come together almost like an army to battle for recovery for ourselves and for our brothers and sisters. And I had this idea for a song. I was sitting up here in the Northeast, right, right around, you know, 17, 70, something or other, sitting in an old kind of pub trying to rally the, uh, the troops for that fight. And uh, I wrote the song with that kind of idea. You imagine them sitting in a pub. Now they're there with me and as we'll sing on part of the chorus if you're, if you're up for it. And it's based off of something one of my friends who's also in that program I'm a part of says all the time, which is, we're all here because we're not all there. <laughs> so that's it. We're all here. We're not all there. If you like singing it with me, singing this is called A Call to Arms. Of a 
church on a concrete step. Loopy man cradles his head. Sat down to find his strength. Can't quite figure where it went. Start to circle, you follow the crows. Give the scent to the dogs and watch where they go. You can drain every drop of the lake, turn every stone. But you don't get the truth if you don't want to know. Are we living or just killing time? No need to avert your eyes when you're blind. The congregation wept, stained their Sunday. On the front steps So they took the back door When they left In front of a church On a concrete stair Lope man Tried to clear his head Sat down to review how his life was spent Can't quite figure where it went When it starts to circle you can follow the crows Keep the scent to the dogs and watch where they go You can drain every drop of the lake Turn every stone But you don't get the truth If you don't want to know Are we living Or just killing time No need to avert your eyes When you're blind Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere playing at luckylandslots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18+. Plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.